What's up guys, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to check and adjust the valve clearance on your late model KTM 690 or Husqvarna 701. We're in the shop today with our 2017 Husqvarna Enduro 701, and we actually have tight valves that need to be adjusted, but if you're just measuring your valve clearance for preventative maintenance, you wanna do that every 6,200 miles. Now, one thing I wanna point out about this is this is the newer style of valve train for these 690s and 701s, so you've got a balancer shaft right next to the cam, but if you have the older style with the cam right in the middle and two rocker arms, we have a separate video that shows you how to adjust those valves, so go check that out. But for this video, we're just focusing on the newer style, so let's go ahead and jump into it. To start out, we need to gain access to our valve cover. We've already removed our side panels as well as our air box and our spark plugs. If you need to know how to do that, we cover those steps in the older KTM 690 and Husqvarna 701 valve adjustment video. So check that out if you need help there. Now, once you have access to the valve cover, you wanna make sure you clean that area off and around there. That way you don't get any dirt falling down into the engine. The other thing I wanna point out is we have our engine at room temperature, and that way we get the correct measurements. From here, we're gonna remove the three bolts in the valve cover and remove it. Now before I take any measurements, I am gonna take a rag, kind of clean this valve cover sealing surface off. Make sure we don't get that dirt in the engine. Next, we have a cap in the middle of our stator cover that we need to remove. So I'm gonna use a 14 millimeter Allen socket to remove that. Make sure you keep track of that O-ring behind there. The next thing we need to do is get our engine at top dead center on the compression stroke. So we've got a little dot right here. I'm gonna move that cable out of the way so you can see it. That dot, it has a white paint mark on top of it. We've got an arrow on that cam tower. So we need to line up that dot with the arrow. Same thing on this other side. There's a little dot on the side of that balancer shaft that needs to line up with the arrow. So we're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise until we have both of the dots lined up with those arrows. Now to check the valve clearance, we're gonna insert a filler gauge in between the intake cam lobe and there's a finger follower just below that. And the spec on this is 0.1 to 0.15 millimeters. And when you slide the feeler gauge in, you want it to go all the way through and to have a slight drag on it. But for us, you know, this filler gauge, it's not even going in and this is 0.03 millimeters. So we know these things are hanging open and they will need to be adjusted. Now to measure the exhaust valve clearance, you're gonna go between the pad on the rocker arm and that shim on the end of the valve. So with this, the spec is gonna be 0.22 to 0.27 millimeters. So the gauge we're using is actually a 0.23. We're gonna start on that smaller end, make sure it goes in. So the 0.23 does go in, it has, a, it has a slight drag. I'm gonna go one size up just to make sure. So we're jumping up to 0.25. And if I try to slide that in, it almost wants to go in, but not quite. So I'm going to write down 0.23 for that left side. And then on the right side, we have slight drag with the 0.23 again. And the 0.25 is not going in. So we're at 0.23 on both of the exhaust sides. So now that we've written down our measurements, we're ready to adjust our valves. Now, this is kind of a unique and really cool adjustment system. So for the intakes, we actually, we need to pull this red tab out and it's kind of hard just to pull up with your hands. So I'm actually gently grabbing onto it with some pliers 
pull this straight out, set that aside. And then right down here, these finger followers, they should just slide to the side, but our valves are hanging open. So we actually have a little bit of tension on them. I'm gonna be really gentle when I slide those over. So if you do what I just did with that screwdriver, just be really careful that you're not damaging anything or scratching anything up. And from here, I've cleaned off this magnet. There's no metal shavings or anything on it. And we've got that shim right on the end of the valve. We're just gonna suck that off with this. And then all these shims. So these are the 10 millimeter width shims. We're gonna set these aside and set them in order. And as I take the shims out, I'm wiping them off with a rag and just setting them in order. A lot of times these are gonna be lasered, but if you can't see that number lasered in anymore, you can use this to measure it. So we've got 2.25 right here. Let me write that down. The other one is 2.3 millimeters. Now that we have our shims measured up, we need to find out which shim we need to reinstall into the bike. So our spec is 0.10 millimeters to 0.15 millimeters. We didn't have any clearance, so we don't actually know where we're at. So we might have to reinstall some different shims until we get an actual reading, and then we can figure out where we need to go. But to simplify the process, what we're gonna do, since those finger followers were kind of hard to slide off to the side, we're going to assume this is hanging open 0 0.05 millimeters. So if you do some simple math, use the big end of your spec since we don't really know. So if you, if you add that 0.05 to the 0.15, you'd go down 0.2 in shim size. But if you didn't follow that, there is a formula for this. So the formula is A equals B minus C in parentheses plus D. So you've got A is gonna be your new shim thickness. B is the recorded valve clearance. C is gonna be your specified valve clearance or your spec. D is the old shim thickness. So if we plug the left intake valve information into that formula, you're gonna have A equals minus 0 0.05 millimeters minus 0.15. And you're gonna add that to 2.25. So bring that down, you've got minus 0 0.20 millimeters plus 2.25. That's gonna give you 2.05 millimeters. And you'll use that same formula for the remaining valves. Now just keep in mind with this, since we didn't measure any clearance here, we're making some assumptions. So you might have to repeat these steps a couple times and try some different shims on the bike before you come up with the right shim. So now that we know what shims we need to put back in, the easiest way to get them is in a kit. These are the 10 millimeter outside diameter shims, and we're using the Pro-X kit. This comes in 0.05 millimeter increments. You can get individual shims if that's what you want. You can get 0.05 or 0.025 millimeter increments. So just be aware of that, but again, the kit is the easiest way to do this, especially if you're gonna keep the bike or if you have multiple bikes. So I'm just gonna grab a 2.05 millimeter shim and we'll grab a 2.1 millimeter shim. So those are gonna be our new shims. And keep in mind, like, if you measure zero clearance like that and you're ordering individual shims, like I said, you're gonna to have to go in there a couple times probably. So you wanna get some shims both above and below the spec in a few different sizes just to be safe. So the next step for us is to apply some assembly lube to these shims and we're gonna install them back on the bike. And to get the shims in place, I am using a magnetic tip screwdriver and I've got another one just to push it down and hold it in place while I remove the other. Once you have those intake shims in place, you can move that follower back into place. Just tip it up a little bit. You can work one finger on each side of the cam and slide it right on there. Once those followers are back into place, you can reinstall that retaining clip. 
Make sure that's clipped down all the way into place. Now, like I mentioned earlier, when we measured our exhaust valve clearance, it's within spec and we don't have to adjust it, but we're gonna show you how to do it anyway, just in case you need to adjust yours. So what we're gonna do is turn the crankshaft over almost two full revolutions. We're rotating counterclockwise. So right about here, you need to stop and press that auto decompressor cam to the side. So we'll just press on the side of the cam. We're gonna rotate this forward just a little bit. So that's gonna keep that out of the way. And the other thing you need to be aware of is we have this balancer shaft right here, but we also have the shaft from the rocker arm that needs to come out the side of the cylinder head. And you don't want that weight getting in the way of that shaft coming out. So make sure it's not in the way. Once you've done that, you can loosen both of these screws right here. We're gonna use a five millimeter Allen to do that. To pull the rocker arm shaft out, we have an M6 by 1.0 millimeter thread pitch bolt. This is 60 millimeters long, and we've got a little hole in the side of that cam tower right there. We're just gonna slide that into there. Then you can pull on that bolt to help pull that shaft out. We're just gonna pull it out of the way for now. Now we can remove the rocker arm. Just be careful, if you have some oil, sometimes those shims can stick to these and you can drop the shim. So just be aware of that. So after that, we're gonna remove any and all shims that were out of spec. Then from there, you wanna use that same formula that we used on the intake shims to figure out the right one to go back in. Once you've done that, you can reinstall your shims. And then as always, you wanna apply assembly lube to everything as you go back together. Now we're gonna set that rocker arm into place. And when you do that, you need to press in on the decompression lever, push that to the side. And then as you push the rocker arm shaft into place, be aware there's that recessed side that's gonna be on the right side of the bike. And that's where your mounting bolt's gonna go. And I'm gonna apply some lube to that. And as you press it in, another check. There's a bigger cutout that's gonna be on the left side of the bike facing forward. So ours is in the correct orientation. We'll slide it all the way in. And then I'm gonna install the right side mounting bolt first. That's the shorter mounting bolt. And then we'll install the left one after we remove that M6 bolt. And then we're gonna to torque both of those to 11.1 foot-pounds. So now I'm just gonna finish lubing everything up. Then I'm gonna rotate the engine over two revolutions and then make sure we're on top dead center again. And I'm gonna double check the valve clearances to make sure everything's correct. So when I remeasured these, this one is actually at 0.10 millimeters, which is just on the tight side of the spec. This one, you can kind of get this in there, but it's real tight and notchy. It doesn't have the slight drag. You kind of have to force it in. So we are actually gonna pull this back out and swap shims one more time. So we ended up going one smaller shim on both of the intakes. Now when we put the filler gauge in, we've got 0.13 millimeters We've got that slight drag on both of the intakes. So we know we're good and we can reinstall the valve cover gasket. Now we did have a little bit of oil leaking out of our gasket, so we're gonna put a new one on. And when we do that, we're gonna apply some glue or silicone to the top so it sticks to the valve cover to make future service easier.
Now, if you need a torque spec for the valve cover bolts, that's gonna be 7.4 foot pounds. And from here, we can go ahead and reinstall the remaining parts that we took off. Every bike is gonna be a little bit different and it kind of depends on what accessories you have. So from here, just reinstall everything the same way you took it off. Now we can reinstall the cap into the stator cover. When you tighten this, make sure you don't crake down on it. It's only gonna be about six foot pounds. And that's how you check and adjust the valve clearance on your KTM 690 or Husqvarna 701. If you have any questions about this process, leave those down in the comments below. And if you need any parts for your bike, maybe the valve cover gaskets, spark plugs, anything like that, you can pick those up on our website. And if you wanna see more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.